Well, welcome to our third session of Robert's Rules. Today, we're going to talk about a different type of uh, motions that are used to Robert's Rules, and that are motions that change motions. So let's get to it. There is a group of motions within the Robert's Rules of Order book that are described to be subsidiary motions. And this is just a classification, if you will. And let's just look at some of the choices that uh, is available to a parliamentarian when they're at a meeting where parliamentary process is underway. The most well-known subsidiary motion is the motion to amend. And this is where you are listening to a motion, it's been seconded, but you feel it could be a little bit better for whatever reason. So really what you're doing is looking for the uh, recognition of the chair, the chair recognizes you, and you are making a change, you're proposing a change to uh, the main motion of what we refer to as the pending question. And so in the order of uh, precedence, it's uh, number 13. It is uh, a motion by its own rights, requires a seconder, it is amendable, it is debatable, and it's passed by the majority of members. Once the motion to amend passes, the pending question or the main motion that was first uh, put onto the floor is now altered. And the way that the chair deals with this is that they deal with motions to amend first and work backwards to the main motion of what we call the pending motion. There is a great tool for anyone that's a member within a group. I use this to great effect. I, I'm known for it. If I'm a voting delegate and I just see debate going back and forth and back and forth and people are just repeating themselves and we've got all the information we need, I look for recognition from the chair and I call the question, which means we're ready to vote. Let's just vote. Now, sometimes the chair will latch onto that. Heck yes, we're ready to vote. And no one objects and they proceed to the vote. But formally, what's supposed to happen is this is a motion in its own right. And so you are looking for a seconder. This type of motion is not amendable. It's not debatable. And it has to be passed uh, by the members present. You can have a motion to um, table the motion or lay on the table. This basically means you're putting it aside and uh, you will get back to it. It requires a secondary. There's no amendments to this. It's not debatable. 51% to lay a matter on the table. Now, there are other types of subsidiary motions. One of my favorites is the motion to postpone indefinitely. Now, this is a beautiful thing. It requires a seconder, it's not amendable, it is debatable, and it requires 51% to vote. And, and what it does is that there may be an issue that's very, very controversial. It's gonna tear apart the organization. And you're a member on the floor, and you really, you know, even though one side might win versus the other, everyone's gonna lose. And so you make a motion to postpone indefinitely, and if you, are successful, if there is a secondary, if it, if it is voted upon, then it goes away. Bye-bye. It's gone and it's never gonna come back. It's postponed indefinitely. Giving the two camps that were involved, no one lost on this, but really no one won either, it just went away. So it's an interesting tactical tool. You can postpone to a specific time or event. Maybe you're waiting for a report. Maybe you need more information. Maybe the financial statements need to be finalized. And so there's nothing wrong with a, let's postpone this uh, motion to, in, you know, like, let's say the motion is to increase dues, but you uh, want to postpone it until the auditor finishes the financial report. And so this type of motion um, needs a seconder, is amendable, is debatable and requires majority to make a decision. 
I personally love refer to committee because sometimes we do not have enough information to make a decision. So rather than kill the motion, let's just refer to committee. It can be studied and brought back. He's a seconder, uh, is amendable, is debatable, 51% vote means to pass it. You can limit debate. And this is where we create standing rules, for example. You can, send, you can say that, uh, I'd like to make a motion that today, uh, debate on, on any topic can, um, each speaker can only be limited to two minutes to speak on it. Again, it requires a seconder, it is amendable, it is, but it's not debatable. It requires two thirds approval of the members, two thirds. So when we talk about a motion to amend, here's an example. You seek a, you know, recognition from the chair. And Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a uh, change to the main motion. I'd like to uh, change the word silly to very silly. And so uh, that's the idea. And you know, the thing about amendments is that you can alter the meaning and intent of the main motion through amendments, you can. You can make amendments to amendments and this is not good at all because uh, I observe once you get into the third layer of amendments on amendments, uh, most people have no ability to keep track of what's going on. It takes a very strong chairperson to keep it on the rails because very quickly everyone loses track of what's going on. So that's, that's to be avoided. You know, the chair must keep the group focused on working on this amendment and working backwards. And often I'll see people rise on a, a motion to amend. I'm talking about the main motion that has to be thrown out of order by the uh, chair to get it focused on. We're just talking about the amendment and we'll get back to the main motion. You can speak on that time. But right now we're just talking on the amendment. In terms of calling the question, um, this is a, a political tool and really it's appropriate when you see someone, you know, a lot of people getting exhausted by the debate, you know, both sides and they're repeating themselves. That's the time to jump in with this tool. So when you refer to a committee, you're, you're, you know, it's not just a referral, it's specifically to a specifically charged committee who has to report back. And uh, motion to postpone, this sometimes is a great tool depending on the circumstance. But the, and the interesting tactical tool I like is motion to adjourn because if the meeting adjourns, <laughs> it's over. So if you found this session useful, please indicate this by selecting the like button. Thank you so much. Um, there'll be more sessions to come. There's so much material to cover in this whole area of parliamentary process. If you wish to see the next section, why not subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified of uh, the new upcoming sessions. As I said, there's a lot more to come. If you have any specific questions about parliamentary process or different types of motions, feel free to um, ask those questions in the comments section uh, or throw in your thoughts. So I look forward to that. And I'll see you at our next session.